Thoughts on the Kingdom Children of God, Part 1 My text is 1 John, Chapter 3, 1 to 3 Children of God, Part 1 In the previous discourse, I spoke on the children of the devil, briefly. All of us are born children of the devil. All of us are born fallen in Adam. But God, in his great mercy and his power and his love, knows how to regenerate sinners, bring them to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and so move them, translate them, transfer them from that realm of darkness into the kingdom of his Son. He does this for millions. And John, writing to believers in his day, says this, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. What rich words. How great, how great is the love the Father, God the Father, has lavished on us. On us, believers, those who are trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. In what way has God lavished his love on us? How great is this love? that we should be called children of God. And John can't leave it there. He has to have this note, and that is what we are. I love the exclamation mark. And that is what we are. Isn't it amazing? Brother and sister, we were born in Adam, dead in sins. But God in his mercy has regenerated us, granted us faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentance toward God, and he's brought us, having been born again and brought to faith, into a living relationship with himself through Jesus Christ. And that is what we are. No longer children of the devil, no longer outside the kingdom, but children of the kingdom. He goes on, What we will be has not yet been made known. I'm looking at verse 2. There is a future aspect to this kingdom. There is a greater and more glorious aspect still to come. Yes, we're in the kingdom, we're the children of God. But there's a future to this kingdom, which we cannot yet know. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know this. What do we know? We know that when he, when the Lord Jesus Christ is manifest again, comes in great glory at the end of the age, we shall be like him. He will transform this lowly body of ours, and make it like unto his glorious body. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall see him, we shall be like him, and we shall be with him forever. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, and so on. But that's the point. My friend, I was born a child of Adam. I was born a child of the devil. I was born dead in sins, far off from God. But by his grace, he has lavished his love upon me and brought me into that position where I am a member of the kingdom. Now, I say me. But this is true of every individual believer. Is it true of you, my friend? If you're trusting the Lord Jesus Christ, it is so. But if you're still outside the kingdom, you're in darkness. Now, there's a great separation here, isn't there? Outside the kingdom is the wrath of God, the condemnation of God. Inside the kingdom is the lavished love of God. There's a separation here. There's a division. There's an oil in water. Uh, there, there is a contrast, a conflict here. It's a separation between what we were and what we are now. And then, of course, John has this further note what we yet shall be. It's a glorious privilege, dignity, honor, to be a child of the kingdom. How can you stay outside this kingdom? You must be born again. You must repent. You must trust the Savior. And if you trust the Savior, if you're joined to him, 1 John, uh, John chapter 1, verses 10 to 13, you are given the right, the privilege, the honor, the dignity of being a child of God. Don't stay outside any longer. Come in, leave the world, and join, be joined to Christ. 
How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. What we shall be? Well, we don't know. But we shall be like our Lord Jesus Christ. What a future that will be.